um, got the x-rays back. He's, he has, um, I don't, we didn't see any fractures with that left rear leg where the severe swelling is and the, like the necrotic tissue is and all that, but there's definitely a pretty decent muscular injury there. Yeah. Um, the big things that we're seeing are he has um, some pretty decent rib fractures on the left side. Uh, and there's a what's called a flail chest, meaning when he breathes, the rib cage is moving the opposite direction it's supposed to. Um, you can actually see him when he sucks in. You see the chest wall kind of suck in on that left side, and then when he breathes out, it blows out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely something we, we're going to watch very closely. It comes down to sometimes these things will heal by themselves. Sometimes at some point they have to be addressed surgically and stabilized. Um, you know, I will say the kind of the, the good overall scenario with a lot of these bad things we're seeing with him. I mean, none of these things happened within the last few hours. I mean, um, his wounds are at least probably 24 hours old. I think a lot of his stuff is is not within the last 12 hours. So the fact that he's still alive, dealing with everything he's dealing with, is a positive in the sense that most dogs with severe flail chest and chest trauma, they're going to die right away if they're going to die. So the fact that he's made it this far is definitely good. He does have some pretty significant changes. Like I said, he's got the flail chest on that left side. He's got a mild pneumothorax. He's got some mild uh, fluid in his chest cavity, a mild uh, what's called a pneumomediastinum, or meaning air in his mediastinum. Um, there's some really consistent changes down the entire spinal column where there's some narrowing of the disc spaces, which that could all just be a chronic thing with him and not related to what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but the worry there is, you know, he was running around earlier today, but if one of those disc spaces where it's narrowed, if the disc actually finally popped and is now compressing the spinal column, that could certainly account for his lack of movement in his rear legs now. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely something we're going to have to watch closely the next 24 to 48 hours because if he's, if he's got a, essentially a, a spinal cord compression somewhere in there, that, that will certainly change you know, recommendations and things moving forward as well. Yeah. Um, the left side, there's some more concern. There's a little subluxation in the SI joint in the pelvis as well. Um, no fractures, but the, the subluxation could be part of um, why there's mobility issues now too. Um, there's mm-hmm. just changes in the knees and the musculature and things like that, soft tissue-wise, just from the trauma itself. Um, so, I mean, x-ray-wise, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on that fits with just, you know, essentially blunt force trauma of some sort. Um, that, you know, it kind of comes down to what my guess is probably hit by a car, something along those lines. Um, you know, the wounds, we've got the wounds. We've cleaned him up real well as best we can. We debrided a bunch of the wounds. He's got some bandages in place. Um, next step, we have him on, you know, pain medicine antibiotics. I'm going to really adjust his pain medicine and stick him on a CRI. He's not oxygen dependent right now, so that's good. It's something we're going to watch closely. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's kind of right now we're just at the beginning stages of this trying to get him to a point where he's as stable as he can be and then really see where things are going to go in the next 24 to 48 hours and see if it is something where he is going to need, like, transfer to, like, A&M or something like that where they could use some additional CTs, check the, you know, the chest wall, make a decision on is this a, a flail chest that we want to repair or is this a flail chest we want to just essentially wrap and give it time to heal on its own.